order. This is a business meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission. This is a business meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission. The town values and welcomes public input. Please address the commission as a whole and not individual commission members. Do not address staff or members of the audience. Commission action on items brought up and called the public's limit to the open meeting law. The commission may direct staff to study the matter and reschedule for further consideration at a later date. Items on the agenda will not be heard or discussed and called the public. Individuals are limited to three minutes. I don't have any cards. Uh, everything's for D1. Does anyone want to address us before we get started? All right. Uh, if everyone could please stand up and uh, we have pledge of allegiance. Yeah, we do have a quorum today. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. C1, consider approval of the minutes of regular meeting, Deputy Town Clerk, the planning and zoning held on October 27, 2022. Did any commissioners have an opportunity to read and review the minutes for accuracy? Do we have any questions or a motion? I make a motion to approve the minutes on October 27, 2022. I have a second. I second that. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor of approving the minutes? from October 27th, 2022. Say aye. 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 Mr. Turner, are you? Aye. All right. Who would Mr. Turner? So we have aye. Commissioner aye. Turner. All right. Thank you very much. Aye. Mr. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Smith is not present, nor is Commissioner um, Kinslick. And so they are not voting and we have a majority. Moving on to D1, discussion of legal action regarding the definition of grief person to the definitions of 17.12.020. Uh, do I have any staff uh, recommendations uh, regarding this? Yeah, this is uh, the second time we brought this forward. Last time I was taken in September. Um, state statute 946206, kind of what we're using as a jumping ground or a starting point rather of what where we feel uh, this should be nailed down as a definition, uh, 9462.06 from the Board of Adjustment. And this is where um, basically we're dealing with who has standing for an appeal. And um, if an appeal, say you guys, for instance, approved a conditional use permit, later it was appealed to the Board of Adjustment, and uh, it can ultimately also be appealed to Superior Court after that, um, this would be the statute that would define an aggrieved person. So I'm just going to read it verbatim. A person aggrieved by a decision of the legislative body or a board or a taxpayer who owns or leases the adjacent property or a property within 300 feet from the boundary or immediately adjacent property, an officer or department of the municipality affected by a decision of the legislative body or board at any time within 30 days after the board or the legislative body, if the board decision was appealed pursuant to subsection J of the section, has rendered its decision may file a claim for special action in the Superior Court to review the legislative body or the board decision. So, um, and then in my CDR from, and this was uh, pretty much a change from last time, what I, what I recommended initially was the same, from the same statute, 9-462.06K, a person agreed by a decision of the legislative body or board or taxpayer who owns or leases the adjacent property or property within 300 feet from the boundary Immediately adjacent property. So, this is basically the same statute. And so, it goes to show that um, the 300 feet is not an arbitrary number. It's also the same distance that we're required to notify people uh, for these hearings. Uh, um, and then, one of the other things I would like to have the, the commission consider is if, in the effect, if in the instance we were allowed to practice extraterritorial jurisdiction um, by the county, say they didn't have a planning. Department, which was one of the issues that was brought up with the land use element, um, we would be required to define, we would be good to the county and define what an agreed party was. And that is statute 9 461 dot 11, extraterritorial jurisdiction, and it, it states in um, F5, the planning zone, subdivision, or land division, regulatory powers under the subsection 
may be exercised by any agency of the city, town, or county as designated an intergovernment IGA. So through an IGA, we would define provisions for defining and agreed party status for administrative or judicial appeal of the development decision. So, so not only is it defined in statute, if it goes to Superior Court, the statutes also say uh, if we practice extraterritorial jurisdiction, that we have the authority to define an aggrieved party. And so those, uh, those are the first two items I'd like for you guys to consider. And then one of the other items is some of the definition, the definition that was brought forward at the Board of Adjustment um, for an aggrieved party, and this was from um, Board of Adjustment member Snitzer. He said that he basically he looked up the definition of an aggrieved party and it gave two definitions. The first being an individual who's entitled to commence a lawsuit because his or her legal rights have been violated, and also a person whose financial interest is directly affected by the decree, judgment, or statute is considered a grief party entitled to bring an action challenge of the gallery of decree, judgment, or the statute. So I think where we left off last time, we were kind of undecided, but I think it's clear from statute that we have the authority and ability to um, define a grieved person. And I think there's also a proven need for it, just on the basis of who, we need to protect property rights. If somebody wants to challenge every single every single time that a conditional use permit is, is issued, there needs to be a definition. There needs to be some limit to who can actually, who has standing and who can bring case, a case to the Board of Adjustment. All right, thank you, Jeremiah. I'm gonna go through uh, <coughs> D1. Mr. McCormick, would like to come up and uh, podium, please? Good evening. Thank you for taking a moment to listen to my opinion tonight. We're all here gathered tonight over one basic word, agreed. And first of all, if you open up a dictionary, for the two definitions that you were given by Councilman Spitzer, there's probably four or five more. And the one I, they were conveniently kept off Jim's list. But the fact is, my, my opinion is, I, can, I live in Pine Top Lakes. I was concerned or aggrieved when the RV park was floated by on Valerie Park, that close to the Outlook Trail. Um, it, it just bothered me. And a local issue is that I walked my dog a couple times a day, pretty much in the same area. And I went by this one house that changed hand, it was a rental, and there were beer cans adorning the yard soon after it changed. And the, the, the other part that really kind of was top road though, was that they penned up chickens in the front yard. Now, I was aggrieved, I was concerned. I was a little upset that I had to take pictures and go to the HOA to get the guy cleaned up. Uh, I was concerned about the value of my own house and my neighbor's homes, and it was well over 300 feet away from my home. I don't know how the politicians came up with 300 feet, but I can live on the south side of town, or in this case the county now is where I live, and be concerned about a property that's on the north end of town. I, I don't understand the issue except to keep people from being interested and concerned about things that go on in our city. And I'd like you to consider that before you vote today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCormick. We always appreciate the input and you're always a stalwart community to provide us your opinion and thoughts on it. I appreciate that. Um, Mr. Trujillo? Thank you for the time. I'm a new resident of Pine Top. I'm a 20, 20 year Air Force veteran. I'm also a 21 year uh, vet, uh, retired federal officer, Homeland Security, U.S. Customs. What you brought up, uh, every, every rule, every regulation is complete opposite. I'm sure you can find stuff that goes up about these seven. This affects the entire town. <clears throat> So everybody in town is going to be agreed. The fire department is going to be affected. 
because there's going to be more calls. Well, these apartment is going to be affected because there's going to be more calls. Um, Kevin, I, I can't believe this, that saying, looking at the map, okay, how many residents are within 300 feet of the proposed development north where uh, Hungry Buffalo stands on? Do you know, sir? From what building? How many uh, citizens live within 300 feet of the proposed development north of Hungry Buffalo? Of Hungry Buffalo now. Uh, there, there's a zone that is on the map that's proposed about them. Nobody lives up there. So who's going to uh, go against it? That's actually in, in the county, so it wouldn't affect that, that, that example. So, so nobody's going to be able to uh, grieve that area, correct? I'm asking because I don't know. We, we wouldn't hear a case that's in the county, the county planning zone. How about the area right over there by uh, the uh, Mongolian Rim Trail? About the yeah, area is being developed. Yeah, I think how many did we had 73. There, we notified 73 people last time within so, 300 feet. So this new developer is going to affect the entire town. Everybody's going to be affected. I'm sure you guys drive the roads. More people, it's going to affect the roads. Who's going to pay for the repayments? Who's going to pay for the extra uh, electric, uh, electric, well, electric uh, sewer lines and everything else that they're going to require? So the whole town is going to be green. The whole town should be able to speak up against this stuff. And I hope you consider this, that everybody should be able to you know, follow a complaint about what's going to be happening here. That's going to affect the entire town. I don't mean to take it because you're saying you the rules. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trio. All right. Uh, just to uh, you know, have a card, if anybody else would like to speak, we can fill out a card. Can you grab a card for her so we just have her name or information? Oh, and if you can hand that to me. My name is Donna Sherwin, and I've lived here for 27 years. And to me, to have a finite definition of a word so that people can be muzzled or not within a town to silence the majority of the people that are living in town because they don't live within 300 feet is, I mean, it's, to me, it's like tiring, I guess. I don't know what else to say, but you're basically muzzling people when you don't allow them to speak just because they want to speak up and they want to have uh, an appeal. They want to be spoken and there's too many people who are going to come forward. I mean, that's ridiculous. Why would you limit? The, the voice of the people. It just, it's, it's, it's insulting to think that you're going to put us in a box and just say shut up because it doesn't affect us. What if it does affect us? What if we don't, for example, the CEP that was, the, over, the uh, appeal was overturned. Nobody at this point can say anything about it because we lost the appeal, the people. And now you want us to not say anything anymore because that appeal aggrieved you. But why can't we speak up? Why can the people's voice not be heard? So you want to limit us. And to me, that's just not appropriate. It's not the way America is. It's a freedom. It's First Amendment, right? It's speaking, speak, speaking, excuse me, First Amendment. So I think we should be given the opportunity to be able to appeal if we'd like to. Does it matter if it's in our neighborhood or not? It's in our town, and we are all citizens in this town. So to me, it's insulting that you would even consider putting us in a box. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Sherwin. And would anybody else like to speak? Yeah, can you grab a card, Mackenzie, for her? And, uh, what was That's your name? Right okay. Thank you, Anne. <laughs> yeah, when you get done talking, just fill out this Hi, good evening. Thank you so much. My name is Janelle, and um, I'm a new resident into Pine Top Lakeside Law. Well, also, I'm uh, been the former mayor of Payson, Arizona. So then with many of these rodeos, and my biggest thing again, is again, we the people, we have the voice, we are the ones that are paying for a lot of this once it comes down to, again, as this gentleman pointed out, is here come the taxpayers. We're the taxpayers. We're gonna have to fund a lot of different things. So my question is, I'm sorry I didn't have a lot of time, I've been working with other things. So currently, if I'm correct, this is not in the uh, inside the definitions. This is inside the manual or anything at the moment. Those two words, correct? 
the aggrieved party is in the town code, but it does not define what an aggrieved party is. Okay, so now you're adding the definition. So it's been there. How long has it been there? Or is, how long has that been in there, but not defined, I guess? Um, I'm, not, I'm not certain on how I can answer definitively. Okay. But it's been there for a while, presumably. Okay, so it, maybe it seems like another thing, too, is because people are getting fed up. And I can see that if it's been in there for years, all of a sudden, you know, the voice of the people are wanting to be heard. So then I, I can understand, trust me, I've been done that in council and everything, that you want to make sure that you have all your definitions, but you do have to make sure that you're for the people too. Again, we're the ones that are going to be paying taxes. We continue to pay taxes. And when things happen, even if it's not in my backyard, again, no matter what, it still affects you. Okay, we've had to deal with many planning zones of cutting a five acre and everybody wants you know, one acre on it and stuff, no matter in that spot, no matter where that development is, it does make a difference to every single person that definitely lives here. And like I said, I just moved here about a year ago. So I'm trying to get acclimated to it. But again, I've seen this kind of push. Sometimes it is an overreach. And again, we're not getting our voices heard. And that's what we're going to ask tonight is that you really hear the voices and not certain things that just because we have power, trust me, it's nice being up there because we do feel like we have power, but you also have where it's in your heart to listen to the voice of the people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Um, Chair, if I could add just a couple of things. Well, let me, let me ask first if there's anyone else left and then maybe you should sure. address everyone. I just yeah. want to make sure the public has an opportunity to speak. Is there anyone else that would like to speak tonight? Yes. Um, can you get a card for Brandy, please? I just want to make sure, Keith, before you address that we get all the concerns ever so we can make sure everyone gets an opportunity. Hi, my name is Missy Campo, and I live just outside of uh, the Blue Spruce Estates, and 300 feet is a tad bit odd to throw a definition of a specific space because I have about 200 yards from my house, a place where the kids are going and doing drugs, and there's needles, and you can find the aluminum foil that they've lit their stuff in, and it's within the, yeah, I walk down there all the time, and I pick up all that trash with the little doodads so that I don't get stabbed. But if you put 300 feet anywhere in this town, it's barely a house and a half. And it, it affects the whole county or the whole city when there's bad stuff going on. So putting 300 feet is kind of ridiculous. It should be left open for the, the people in this, this city to say, hey, this stuff's going on. This is bad stuff. And I just think putting a, just a, an amount of feet is not going to do it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody else? I just want to make sure we, everyone has an opportunity. Absolutely. Anyone out after him? Because I can have you fill out cards before you come up to speak. Nope. That's not the chair. Okay. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Norm Kincaid. Uh, I just wanted to uh, see what, uh, if this were to go through with the standoff of uh, how many structures or homes would be built, what's the impact as far as population increase for? The Pine Top Lakeside area. Have there been any projected ideas of how many hundreds or thousands would then be either residents or seasonal visitors or renters, that type of thing? Is there any projected idea of where we're going to end up? This really has no direct bearing on um, population. I can tell you that from a census standpoint, our population is decreasing in the last decade. Well, I have no doubt of that. I've had it several hundred so. residents. Right. But I'm just looking at, you know, again, the proposal is it correct? Am I correct in uh, that the change for one home per acre is now looking to be possibly up to 20 homes per acre in given areas? Um, I don't know where you're getting your information from, but that's incorrect. Could you not, could you let us know what the what what is the projected density? of the proposed areas then? There are no proposed areas. What we're dealing with tonight is just defining 
who has standing to bring an appeal um, off different different um, instances, not particularly okay, has so to do with development, but it could be anything that a decision that I make or a decision that uh, the commission makes. Um, so it's not specifically for any development project. Okay. Um, so me as a resident, not living within 300 feet, would not be affected by the decision to make changes in this zoning. Um, so again, we're not making any changes in any zoning. We're not hearing a zoning amendment tonight. Um, if there was, for instance, a zoning amendment and you were within 300 feet, you would be notified just like you are required to be currently. Uh -huh. And, and um, so in, if you had an issue with it, then you would be able to appeal it. So we are required by statute to notify within 300 feet. And uh, by statute, it also uh, says that you could be declared a green person. So in, in the instance where, as previously mentioned, it say a, a conditional use permit was issued and somebody appealed it, which recently happened, um, there would be a notification, which there was 73 people notified in that particular instance. And um, if you had uh, agreements to bring forward, you could appeal it. And that's the same statute that if it was appealed and denied, that you could appeal it again to superior court so you would have your day in court. And when you had your day in court, rest assured that they would use this definition um, that's already in statute. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Can I say something based on the information that was just provided? No, I mean, we only we have a, a limited time, in, in, unfortunately. But I had our hand raised, and one more gentleman. Is that it? Is everyone wants to make sure we have cards to everybody? Everyone here. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Mr. Beck. Yep. Mr. Beck. Well, uh, I am an aggrieved person. I'm aggrieved that this is even being discussed. The definition in the dictionary is good enough for me. It sounds like you're trying to uh, add to that to prevent the public from voicing their opinions. And um, that's just not right, the 300 feet. Th that's not right either. It's less, just like someone already spoke. Uh, if we live in the town, if, if we see something wrong, we should have the right to voice our opinion. We love our town and we, we want to protect everything about it that's good. And, and so we have the right as a citizen of this, of this town and of this country to voice our opinion whenever and wherever we see something wrong that's going on in our government. So I, I just wanted to get up and, and say that uh, th this is not a good thing to do. So I hope you'll vote against it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beck. I think that concludes every, everybody, correct? Fantastic. Um, Mr. Johnson, if you would sure. like to address some of the concerns perhaps we've heard and then uh, we'll... Okay. Um, my name is Keith Johnson, I'm the town manager. Thank you all for coming out tonight. The number one, I want to just mention what Mr. McCormick was talking about was a code violation in the county, and he has the right to notify <coughs> their appropriate department that if he sees something, and, and so that's a totally different issue about being in a grieved party on what we're talking about tonight. This definition does not do anything to silence the citizens voice or opinions. All of our work is done in open meetings. You will always have the right to come and voice your opinion. And the council or the Planning and Zoning Commission will always listen to what you say and they'll weigh their decisions. But an aggrieved person also has to show harm. Okay. So let's say that there, I'll use it as an example. Let's say there was a a property where a cell tower was going to go up and it was going to be 200 feet tall and if a and they so they had to apply for a, a variance to put that on there 
uh, the, the let's say the PNC approved that variance. Well, the school there's a school district next door, and they have buildings within 90 feet. They can show special harm to appeal that decision because if that cell tower fell on one of their buildings because they're within <coughs> 90 feet of a 200 foot tower, then they show special harm. That goes through the courts. So those get if it goes to the Board of Adjustment and you don't like that, then you can take it that decision, then you take it to a court, and the court's going to say, what was your special harm? Just being upset about something does not mean that that counts for this definition in court as to what an aggrieved person is. So we're trying to, there's many laws that we have that are on our books that are the same as state statute. So we're trying to put this into our code just to help uh, our staff, our council, our planning and zoning, and our citizens understand that we are also following state law. Okay, so that's all we're trying to do is to codify within the town code what the definition of an agreed person is. We're not trying to silence anybody. No one has ever been silenced at this podium. Why can't you use the now definition? That, you, that you're out of line. So, I'm sorry. If you want to come back up, you'll have to address at the at the podium. We can't speak from the audience like that. So that, you know, that's all we're trying to do. Now, the reason this was tabled before, and we had to bring it back because we have to bring it back. And so that's where we're at tonight. And so um, we're trying to, you know, in a way, we're trying to also show so that there were 73 people, I'll use the previous conditional use permit, 73 people within that property or within the scope of the guest ranch property could have filed an appeal, <clears throat> you know, if it was to come back before you uh, next month or next year. So there was plenty of people, but it's not fair to the, any property owner to have anybody willy-nilly throughout the town file to try and stop a development when they are not harmed by that development. And so that's all we're trying to do is help everybody understand what your rights are, what the property owner's rights are, and and for the and for the community. So that's all I have to say. Thanks, Keith. Um, Mr. Beck, I gave a couple extra words and I want to make sure that can you just go to the podium I'm more than happy. Now I'll, I'll I'll give me a second, Mr. Tino, and I'll I'll let you just add just please just limit to just like a minute or two. Sure. I really want everyone to feel like we're, we're listening to you guys tonight because we do care. Thanks. Well, when uh, the, the town um, manager was speaking, he said, if it's not harming them directly, but what if that new development is harming our town or the, uh, you know, the small town we have or the natural environment that we have? That, because we live in that town, I say it is harming us directly. So that's my only point. Why can't you just use the definition that's in the dictionary? Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Beck. Mr. Tequila, just kind of keep it short, real fast. And really quick. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm not picking on you, I just want to get some more information. Of all these regulations that you found, did you find any, any that contradicted what you came up with? Or did you just look for regulations that went along with what we, you want to do? Um, so these are the Title IX definitions for municipality. The, the Title IX has to deal with the cities and towns. And these are the definitions for a grief person that I found within Title IX. Uh, again, which is in state statute. Which is in state statute for municipalities. So you have to go by this. Yes. You have to go by these rules. You can't say we're going to make it since the whole town is going to be uh, aggravated by this decision. The whole town shouldn't be able to speak. <coughs> if a police cannot respond to a call once out of town, wouldn't that person be agreed? If the fire department could not go put out a fire because they're in the other side of town, wouldn't they, that person be agreed? That's not what we're talking about tonight. That's a totally different issue. This definition of agreed person only refers to the, uh, uh, 
the Board of Appeals. I understand. So I, I, went up, I, 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 I just find it hard that you only found regulations that went along with what you want to insert. So yes, the, the title that I pulled from is Title IX 462.06, mm -hmm. and it's for the Board of Adjustment where an appeal would go to. So I think we'll look up this regulations. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's directly related, it's not indirectly, it's directly related. Okay, so I can find these regulations, yes. I put my own information. Sure. I can go find them. Just yes. 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 If you want to write that number down, you can look it up. Oh, if it's here, I'll, okay. I'll look it up. We are bound by state statutes. That, that is, that is. I hope you understand my yeah. it, curiosity that you only found regulations that go what, what you want to apply. So I, I searched through the entitled revised statutes and for a Greek person, but specifically for municipalities, because that's the only definitions that are applicable in our case. No, I'll look it up. Thanks for the action. No, you're welcome, Mr. Tito. You know, I hopefully I can make a little bit of clarity on it. So what they're proposing is that if if you had a different definition and then there was an appeal and it ended up in, in front of the superior court, they're going to go to Title IX, Arizona Revised Statute ARS Title IX, and they're going to apply, regardless of what we say today, they will apply that statute. That statute was approved by the Arizona legislators, which the people of Arizona elected to make that statute. And so regardless of what we do today, if it goes to the Court of Appeals and ends up there, a motion to dismiss will be filed based on there's no standing if you're not within 300 feet, and it will be granted. And it has nothing to do with the town. That's what would happen if it gets that far so the town just wants to be in line if i'm not right with exactly what that would happen so we even if they gave you a different amount of feet and you guys appealed and it ended up going to uh the board of justers and it went to the superior court the court of appeals the court of appeals at that point would dismiss it because you don't have standing they would just regardless of what we wrote they would just it'd be gone because that's the statute that the arizona legislation has created and drafted. So all this statute, all this ordinance here does is just set the same, it's the same exact footage that's on that, if I'm understanding that correctly, right? So, and, and I will reiterate, like, come and speak, and just because it's 300 feet, if an individual is outside the 300 feet and they come and talk to us, that doesn't mean we're gonna agree to the CUP or whatever it is because you're not within the 300 feet. It just means you can't appeal as an individual, anyone within the 300 feet can. And if you appeal it outside of that, even if this, if we let you do it here, it will just be shot down in the court of appeals. Just carte blanche, it won't, it won't go anywhere. And that's nothing to do with us. I mean, that's kind of an unfortunate way. And I'm not saying I agree or disagree with 300 feet, but that's the end result of what would happen. So the town's just trying to make sure the citizens know if you appeal it and you're not in the 300 feet, and it goes to the Court of Appeals, it's gonna be dismissed. Not Nothing to do with us. Now, if you wanna change that, and you believe 300 feet's not right, get with your Arizona legislator, get them to change Title IX, and the, the wording of it. Um, otherwise, you would spend a lot of time and money and expense to get to that point just to have it defeated. And I'm not saying I agree with it or disagree with it, that's just what's gonna happen, um, unfortunately. So, and, um, you know, since I've given everyone a couple minutes, if you have a couple of, you, you have, yeah, 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 you gotta come to the podium to report. I'll give you a couple minutes. Like I said, I, re I really appreciate all the input. I wish you guys always came when we have an issue so we can hear your position. So please, well, I think please state your name again. Yeah, Janelle Sterner. I think the biggest thing is, is because of the wording, I would just add exactly if it's gonna be a wording issue, is put that it has to be bodily harm or harm. There's nothing in here that has that. You see, I mean, you've got, a, you're, you're using it. But again, we all seem to be, you know, confused because the verbiage is, is really hard. That's fair. And it's not understanding. So again, if it's this if it's this point that you're trying to make that it a grievance it personally has to harm me, <laughs> you know, then I think you need to add that in there. That might help you out. All right. I, I really appreciate that. Uh, Jeremiah, would you like to make any comments about that? That would be that would be for the courts to decide what yeah, that it's a subjective a, that could be a huge definition of and the courts have more access to um, case law 
to help them come to that decision of what that special harm is. So that's that's already going to be in there. We're just narrowing, trying to help narrow it to this point right here. If it was to go beyond, if, if say if somebody within that 300 feet appeals, and this let's say this on our code, and um, they appeal it just like you were describing earlier. They appeal it within the three. They live within the 300 feet. We'll say. And it, then it ends up in the superior court. Then they still have to show to the court that they have special harm, and and then the courts define what that is. And we're not going to be able to define that <coughs> here. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Shura. Yeah, please come come to the podium. And make sure you announce your name. Like I said, I really want to make sure everyone has an opportunity to speak. So, <coughs> excuse me, it's Donna Sherman. So, the Board of Appeals is the town council. You can appeal that ruling, and that would go to the superior court, and in the superior court at that point. But what I'm saying that. is that you're essentially saying that you want to limit who can appeal something, so that you can't be bothered by us because we are not aggrieved because we don't fall within the 300 feet that affects the 73 people around the CP that was assigned to Mr. Code. So we basically are being muzzled. You don't want us to come to you and even hear an appeal. That's what you're saying, because we're not agreed. And if there's no bodily harm, because the tower's not going to fall on us, or Mr. Code's horses aren't going to run over our chickens or whatever, we, we, you don't want to hear from us. No, we absolutely want to hear you come. Well, then why can't we appeal? Why can't we appeal? If we want to take the time to appeal, as, as, as citizens of this town, whatever number we are, as far as citizens go, why are we being muzzled? Why can we not appeal it and take that time Probably because the town council is the board of adjustments, which doesn't seem fair to me, and it's going to be turned down. But if we want to take that time and we want to appeal it and we want to put it out there and we want to have our voices here heard, why can't we file an appeal? Why do we have to be aggrieved and be 300 feet? There's no bodily harm. It's not in the statute. Why are we being limited? Why do you want to muzzle us? If it's our time and our effort, but Jeremiah's comments are. Well, it's you know taking up time. I mean, there's just people that keep coming up and keep coming go forward. Well, you know what? It's the right of the people to be heard. And if we want to file an appeal, why are you going to limit us? Because we're not 300 feet from something. I mean, it, it just doesn't make sense. It's it's tyrannical. Can, can I me mean, Like I, I I agree with all your opinion, your opinions, but I think we're, what we're missing the point is we keep going to the example of Mr. Cohen. He came and he presented, correct? You guys are, every, the public is still able to come in and address their concerns and want to hear input and hey, how, planning and zoning, can you look into this, et cetera. Like at that point, we're still all discussing, we're still all trying to figure out, you know, how we can make sure that it meets the citizen and everything. So we're, you're still able to be heard in every retrospect along the entire process. But once it's approved, that's where it's, that's where the individuals within that 300 radius, they're the ones that are able to appeal that decision. So you're muzzling us. You said anybody who doesn't want to. It's not muzzling us. But if it doesn't pertain to us, but yet it does, for example, Mr. Cope, prime example, he's going to put this 20 acre little dude ranch over there with Conestoga wagons, but there's no traffic study done. There's going to be potentially a light there, people turning out. Uh, it's the entrance to our town. Who knows what he's going to do with that piece of land? It aggrieves us because we're landowners in town. No. We are citizens, we're taxpayers, and we, we pay the bills. We pay your bills. We pay we pay the salaries of the town. So why are we being told, shut up? I don't, I, I, I don't want to come, like, come off argumentative with you at all, but it's more of a sense of you're still able to hear your voice. And in and, and the big scheme of things, I think that's where it's kind of hard is looking at the benefit of the public for the most part. And I know a lot of individuals were, were concerned about what Mr. Cope was trying to put in, etc. But in the big scheme of things, we, the town, other citizens want a lot of other things to be put in to the, into the town. But somebody across the street, or not across the street, across town could come and say, I don't want that, and it impacts everybody else. And everybody in that 300 radius, perhaps they wanted it. Maybe they were excited for that to come in. But somebody a mile away says, no, I don't want that. They file an appeal, they get up individuals, and they cut it back. So again, we're able to, you're still, everybody's able to hear their concerns, their, what they like to be involved, et cetera. But then when it comes down to the decision, the, the decision of somebody actually saying, I completely disagree with what this is, was done, that's that terms radius. I, I, I'm, there's good examples, bad examples, but from what my point, standpoint is, it comes down to, 
those individuals that are most affected in that 300 radius, lining up with a statue, we're not silencing you. You're still able to hear your, your, your voice, your opinion. So I hope you don't feel like we're muzzling you because that's not that's not all what this is about. Well, you are. When Jeremiah's words are, it takes up a lot of time. We pay the salaries of you guys. You're our public servants. We don't get paid a dime. I'm, I'm not. Yeah. It's the town, essentially the town staff, essentially. Well, you guys are appointed. Anybody in the whole state? Of feeling they were agreed. Yeah, Why did they, they come here on vacation? Because, it, because they come here and they've come here their whole lives to this little small let, town. Let me put some perspective on it. And, and I don't know if this will help. So let's just say it goes through and you're an agreed party, you're not an agreed party, and you, they appeal it. And then you want to appeal that ruling, but now you can't. You can't because if you appeal it, it's going to be dismissed by the Superior Court out three, not 300 feet. That's my choice in time. If I so want to spend my time that way, then let me. choose an individual within the 300 feet to move the action forward. Well, you know what? There's a lot of people who feel very apprehensive to approach anybody. And there's so that's their people. fault? That's 73 people. But that's the end result. So it's there. the town is presenting. We, we, we don't. None of us up here, like, you just kind of hostile towards it. We're not the one who put this on the agenda. The town is presenting this forward because this is an issue that had actually come up, and they're just trying to look for a solution in case we get to that scenario. I agree that with Mr. Brinkwell, like, we're not Muslim. You can come in and talk, and, and we don't necessarily have to prove it. Man, you can speak all day long, and we could be like, you know what? You live a mile away, and we think that's a terrible idea, and we go with it. But we ultimately don't approve anything anyways. We just pass on a recommendation to the town council. And you're right, you have an issue because the town council board justice is with one within the same. So how do we win? We're basically on the time. So, I, you know what? Change the legislation on that. Uh, file. So sit down out. and shut up, essentially. No. You, if you want to be an active participant in the, the town, do it. But we can't file an appeal. If you're not no. within the 300 feet, you can. Then that's muzzling the town's voice. And if you want to change it, become a commissioner on planning and zoning, apply, apply for town council, become mayor. I mean, be an active participant, and we can try to change those things within. I mean, you know, you seem very active. You have a fantastic opinion and an approach. Become part of the town. Well, I've been here 27 years. Perfect. Involved. Perfect. Become part of the town that makes the decisions that do. We'd love to hear your voice. But, so, but not if you're aggrieved. No, that we're not. We're not saying that whatsoever. You can come up and, and speak about it. I mean, absolutely. And we'll not aggrieved in three hundred feet. I've been on this commission for four or five years. I've never seen you at a meeting here. Well, I watch it online. Okay. So thank, thank you. No, you're you're welcome. I really do appreciate it. We're going to close so, this off. I'm let, sorry. let me just say one thing. Okay, this is the last closing yeah. moment. So, you know, there's always two sides too. There's also the rights of the of the property owner that maybe you know, whatever property owner that you feel like you're grieved against, they have rights too. And I believe that's why the state statute is there. It protects the parties that are possibly truly aggrieved, and it also protects the property owner's rights. So there has to be a balance. There has to be a decision made, and that's what we're we're not doing anything different than what is on state statute today. And, and if we did different, a property owner next year, 10 years from now, could come and sue the town because we did not follow state statute. So we're just trying to codify it so everybody understands what the play, playing field is. And it's not to silence you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just going to close it off. At this point, is there any discussion? Mr. Turner, would you like to say anything? Mr. Turner? Yes. <clears throat> yes. The first time this came up, I felt very uncomfortable. Um, and I think my exact words were, this feels like a form of censorship. And if anybody ever wants to talk to me about anything, I want them to approach me. I guess my background has been the things that I did, my team did, were on national TV. So my books were wide open. I welcomed anybody who wanted to come in and criticize, and they did. And I didn't agree with everything that was brought forward, but I listened to them and made decisions from there. I still feel uncomfortable. Uh, it just seems like, again, uh, I don't understand 
uh, why this is the big thing with the, with the town staff. I mean, if somebody on the other side of town wants to complain about my community, I want to hear what they have to say because I've got to learn something. I may not agree with them, but I've got to learn something, and I, I should be able to address it. I should be able to respond. So I'm still uncomfortable and uh, in the vote, I don't think I'm going to be positive on it. Thank you, Commissioner Turner. And just to be clear for you, they, they do have the right, they, we do have a chance to respond. They just have to come to the meeting. This is solely the secondary, assuming that PNC passes, assuming that the commissioners, if they have two bites of the apple there, they can go to the town council and discuss and there can be positive feedback or negative feedback either way. And then at that point, they've already had two opportunities to be heard and issue their opinion. And then once the town rules, it just doesn't allow them uh, Mr. Turner to appeal it. So they actually have two opportunities to, to come um, and state a position and persuade and maybe implore. Maybe it's, you know, what they're trying to do is, is actually beneficial for the town. So they absolutely do get heard and they absolutely have two opportunities, planning and zoning and town council. Um, this would just be the third step in the process. Um, any other commissioners? Uh, Commissioner Williams? This is talking about great people. The group that um, appealed Brett Coates' property, they weren't agree. I mean, they weren't technically agreed. They were just a group of people that appealed it. Where's the definition to separate that from this? So that's what we're trying to define. Um, because if, it, what if, if that case would have been appealed to Superior Court, it would have been held to this standard of 300 feet. If they were in 300 feet, nobody on that appeal actually was not heard the case anyway. But um, if it was appealed further to Superior Court, it would have been held to the standard that we're proposing. They were, they missed it. No so if this is passed, then those people can't do the group that did that. They can't go and appeal it. The decision. They just need one individual. Yeah, it's within the three hundred feet. Right? Those right. guys they just have to find somebody within three hundred right. feet that is a, that could be fall into the aggrieved person category. Right, but those other people that were on that appeal, they can't be on it technically then, right? I mean, t technically they're not supposed to be They could sign on it, but they wouldn't be considered an aggrieved person. Right. And they could still come and speak to the effect of uh, their opinion toward for or against. It's not necessarily just if one was approved, it could also be if one was denied that a party could be an aggrieved person. And so could the homeowner be, the landowner be aggrieved? Right, yes. And yes, he would appeal it and then they would dismiss it. There was nobody within 300 feet. Once again, not our definition with distance. It seems almost arbitrary, but it hasn't. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, nobody here is not. Yeah. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Commissioner Turner? Uh, I'm, I don't have any, anything additional. Thank you. I mean, anything that's been presented for the past 40 years here in Pine Top Lakeside, people that got notified, were, that lived within 300 feet of that property got notified, each individual homeowner. But that's, that's irregardless of this. But that's, I'm just comparing that to this. They're not comparable. You, if you're in 300 feet, you get notified that's a different statute. If you want to appeal a decision, like Jeremiah said, positive or negative, right. Got to be within 300 feet, and that's a state statute. They're completely 100% separate. But what I'm trying to get at the 300 feet, those people that are in, the, in around that vicinity that are trying to build, they're notified. Correct. But the whole town can come and speak to that. Absolutely. Just like, like this. So that's absolutely. Why, that's why I'm trying to get yes. the same point across. Yes, absolutely. You don't have to be within the 300 feet to be heard. Correct. Hopefully, the audience saw that we we, we taking everything. Right. In fact, you don't even have to be a resident of the town to be heard. You can be in the county, and the commissioner of the council will still give credence to what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, you know, some of these properties we've discussed, many of the individuals live in the county, actually. But most people don't know where the delineation is. Any other comments, questions, concerns, Mr. Grimhall? What I like about this is it kind of shows a structure of, you know, anybody can come in, discuss, provide their inputs. We take the Town Council, planning and zoning, take that into consideration. 
but then it kind of limits to that property. It almost like allows the final decision to come in, in between those alternative individuals, even in the future, you know, a, amazing a sprouts where it wanted to come here. You know, people could appeal it from all over the place because they don't want something in here. But yet the citizens who in that 300 foot radius are super excited about it, they want it, but yet they get appealed because of an individual, you know, a mile away. So I, I think this is, I, I like the idea of controlling that 300, 300 feet or making a guideline, not just because it lends the states, but it has like a good, allows people to like progress, allows the area to continue moving forward. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion to recommend adding the definition of an aggrieved person to 17.12.020 to the town council. Thank you, Commissioner Seward. Do I have a second? I'll love to second that. Second from Commissioner Bernhall. All those in favor, Mr. Turner, if, uh, well, yes, well, is there any discussion? With staff recommendations. What, what's the staff recommendation? She's going to do that with the motion. And I'm asking you right now, would you? you have something you want to add? No, just with staff recommendation, whatever that they Okay. Can. So, Ms. Stewart, Mr. Commissioner Williams was saying with staff recommendations. I don't understand. Yeah. Usually, when they make, make motion to pass it, it's with staff, we usually make recommendations with it. So, it. so the, the recommendations of the CDR for an agreed person, a person agreed by decision of the legislative body or planning and zoning commission owns or leases the affected property, the adjacent property, or property within 300 feet from the boundary of the affected property, an officer or department of the municipality affected by a decision of the legislative body or planning and zoning of the board and planning and zoning commission. Thank you, Chairman. Lyon. All those in favor, say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. Nay. Okay. Let the record show. Commissioner Turner said nay. Uh, Commissioner Kinslick is not present. Commissioner Smith is not present. And uh, all the yeas, Commissioner Williams, Brimhall, Stewart, and Salsko. Okay. Um, new business, we covered that. It's, e. it's adjournment. You can adjourn.